Well, the first thing in your question, it's very important, the question you pose, because the concept of value-based is one that this time has come. We need to now move from paying clinicians and hospitals based on the volume of services to the value of those services provided. And what I'm particularly excited about is it seems to be general consensus about that now. Nobody's debating it. What is very exciting, and here at this conference, we're actually spending, we're devoting a day to the strategies, the collaborative strategies that health plans and their provider partners are engaged in, in changing the way payment is designed and payment is uh, delivered uh, between the health plan and the provider. And let me give you a couple of examples. We see health plans around the country working with providers to bundle payment. So you introduce the concept again of prospective payment, you introduce the concept of risk sharing from the perspective of uh, specific medical conditions. We're seeing broad ACO relationships and underlying those ACO relationships, we're seeing gain sharing, we're seeing again prospective payment and working with hospitals in particular to make sure that they are able to manage risk. We agree on the guidelines and the evaluations that will be uh, established so that the providers feel that those benchmarks make sense and that they're very comfortable with and we're working or rowing the boat in the same direction. I think that's very, very different than what we saw even three or four years ago. So this agreement on measures, looking at quality measures as well as cost of care measures. And then also the medical home. The, the concept of a patient-centered medical home is the idea of care coordination, but helping health plans using its skills to help physicians identify those at-risk patients, getting them into a care coordination system so their comorbidities can be managed. So we don't have people leaving offices with shopping bags full of drugs that um, people the physicians have had the opportunity to look at all the different drugs, think about the interactions of those drugs, think about how the interactions of um, asthma, diabetes, pulmonary kinds of conditions, and how their treatment plans work together. So I think that there are tremendous developments now, indeed leaps in how we're paying, and also what we're paying for. So there's much more discussion now between health plans and providers, not only how you're going to re redesign the reimbursement system, but what are you paying for. So this whole concept of best practice now is also coming into its own. It's very important. Looking at the leadership that's been taken by provider specialty societies to make sure that we're able to bring that information in real time to physicians so they don't have to pour over many pages of medical journals. We can do that. We can provide dashboards of data to show the physicians how their practice compares to other physicians in their community and across the country. So there are real opportunities now both to change the way payment is structured but also what we're paying for and really get back to this principle that was talked about in the 90s, but then left on the cutting room floor, if you will, which is the right care at the right time in the right setting. And I think we're going to see much more discussion of those concepts uh, going forward.